When it comes to sports in Lorraine, your station to watch is TV20, Lorraine City Schools Television. On a Friday, September 17th, and I might add a very brisk Friday evening in September, thanks to Hurricane Ivan. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ron Bacalar, along with my partner, Barry Buck, our cameraman, producer, and director, Joe Bach. And from George Daniel Field, the fourth week of high school football, it's the big one here in the city of Lorraine. The Lorraine Southview Saints playing host to their crosstown rival, the Admiral King Admirals. And Barry, both these teams come into this game tonight 0-3. It's a given. Somebody is going to walk out of this stadium with a win. Unless we have some uh, intervention from Mother Nature. <laughs> but yes, uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good game. You're not going to believe that these teams are 0-3 because they're putting it all on the line now. This is, this is the one they need to have. Talking to both Coach uh, Mark Campo and Tony Shoulders, Mark Campo of Admiral King, the head coach, very disappointed with his 0-3 record up to this point, really believing that it should be 2-1. and one. He felt that his team was out there to play football. The only problem is too many mistakes, and mistakes can lead to losses, and that's exactly what the situation has been. Mark Campo says that the team has had good practices all week long, and they look for a big game tonight. Meanwhile, across town, Tony Shoulders also also disappointed with his 0-3 start. And likewise, he is saying that his team has been in ball games. He felt that he should have been 2-1 and one at this point in time with victories over Illyria Catholic and Westlake. And he did uh, see that uh, last week's game against Huron was definitely a win by Huron. So, uh, like we said, somebody is going to come out a winner in tonight's ball game. It should be a grand one. Now let's check the starting lineups for both our teams, offensively and defensively. The starting lineups for the Admirals and for the Saints brought to you by Ted's Floor Covering, a local business investing in Lorraine's future. Ted's Floor Covering featuring today's highest fashions for your discriminating tastes. Ted's Floor Covering at 668 Broadway, downtown Lorraine, with outstanding carpet selections and vinyl, ceramic, hardwood, and laminate floor coverings. Ted Kahlo, president. Now the offensive 11 for the Admirals, starting at quarterback, wearing number 12, a 190-pound junior, 6'4", James Pinkerton. In the backfield... At halfback, wearing number 40, a 200-pound senior, six-foot-tall Craig Wood. At wide receivers, number two, Jordan Simmons, a 161-pound junior. At the other wide receivers, number five, Jerry L. Nixon, a 210-pound senior. Also at wide receiver, number six, a 170-pound junior, Kevin Wilson. And the last of four wide receivers, number three, a 155-pound junior, Paris Hilliard. Now checking the line for the Admirals offensively at center. Number 57, a 225-pound senior, Russell Toth. At right guard, wearing number 87, a 200-pound junior, Gabe Washington. At left guard, wearing number 74, a 195-pound senior, Matt Kredovix. At left tackle, wearing number 60, a 215-pound senior, Alex Saunders. And rounding out the starting 11 for the Admirals offensively, at right tackle, wearing number 76, a 205-pound senior, P.J. Carter. Doing the cutting, uh, cu uh, kicking off and the punting for the Admirals, number 28, a 180-pound senior, Rocky Ferrero. And now looking at the starting 11 defensively for the Admirals, at the tackles, number 53, a 225-pound junior, Anthony Linden. The other tackle, number 73, a 195-pound senior, Ryan Ransom. The two defensive ends, number 76, a 205-pound senior, P.J. Carter. The other defensive end, number 40, a 200-pound senior, Craig Wood. At the four linebacking spots on the inside, number 51, a 195-pound junior, John Harder. And the other inside linebacker, number 52, a 200-pound junior, Ron Linkus. 
The two outside linebackers, number 87, a 200-pound junior, Gabe Washington, and number 32, a 190-pound senior, Julius Blackman. The two defensive corners, number three, a 155-pound junior, Paris Hilliard, and number six, a 170-pound junior, Kevin Wilson. And rounding out the starting 11 defensively for the Admirals at safety, wearing number 21, a 175-pound junior, Rashawn Lagarde. And there you have the starting offensive and defensive lineups for the Admirals. In a moment, we'll check the Southview uh, starting offensive and defensive players. And talking to Coach Shoulders, it was indicated that he's had to make some changes from previous games for the simple fact that a few of his regular starters have missed practice legitimately with good excuses. But his rule is, you miss practice, you don't start. Very, very strong on discipline over there at Southview. All right, checking now the starting 11 offensively at quarterback for the Saints, wearing number four, a 180-pound junior, Patrick McCray. At the running backs, uh, number 21, a 205-pound uh, junior, Juan Williams. Also at running back, number 23, a 175-pound sophomore, Ryan Harvey. The other running back, number 24, 180 pound senior and brother, Derek Harvey. The wide receiver is number two, Robert, correction on that, the tight end is number 22, Alan Quattlebaum, a 200 pound senior. And the wide receiver, number two, a 175 pound senior, Robert Laurenti. Now looking at the offensive line for the Saints, at center, wearing number 64, a 240-pound junior, Eric White. At the guards, number 55, a 240-pound junior, Eddie Hall. The other guard is number 52, a 230-pound senior, James Asif. At the tackles, number 66, a 240-pound sophomore, James Young. The other tackle, number 65, a 270-pound senior, Rodney Tolson. Doing the kicking off and the extra points, number 45, a 160-pound freshman, Chris Garcia. And doing the punting for the Saints, wearing number 33, a 205-pound senior, Josh White. Now checking the starting 11 defensively for the Saints at the defensive tackle positions. Number 76, a 280-pound senior, Joe Kazora. The other defensive tackle, number 56, a 200-pound junior, Kanan Watson. The two defensive ends, number 21, a 205-pound junior, Juan Williams. The other defensive end, number 52, a 230-pound senior, James Asef. The four linebackers on the inside, wearing number 33, a 205-pound senior, Josh White. The other inside linebacker wearing number 7, a 190-pound senior, Lamar Miller. The two outside linebackers wearing number 22, Alan Quattlebaum, a 200-pound senior. And also on the outside wearing number 83, a 175-pound sophomore, Dominic Jones. The two defensive corners, wearing number 20, a 175-pound junior, Devin English, and number 40, a 170-pound senior, Ryan Redinger. Rounding out the starting 11 defensively for the Saints at free safety, wearing number two, a former Lorraine Catholic student, wearing uh, number two, a 145-pound senior, Robert Laurenti. And there you have the starting 11 defensively for the Saints. The starting lineups for tonight's game brought to you by Ted's Floor Covering, a local business investing in Lorraine's future. That's Ted's Floor Covering featuring today's highest fashions for your discriminating tastes, located at 6 68 Broadway in downtown Lorraine, Ted Kahlo, President. We'll be back with the homecoming ceremonies. As we indicated, tonight is the Saints home game and it's homecoming for Southview. We'll have a look at the Southview king and queen and the court, but this time out first. 
Since 1921, your hometown financial professionals at First Federal Savings of Lorraine have dedicated themselves to meeting the financial needs of their customers and surrounding communities. They offer a wide variety of financial investments as well as home mortgages to meet your every need. Loans on boats, cars, mobile homes, and other worthwhile purchases are also available. Whatever your financial need, First Federal Savings of Lorraine is ready to help. Seven convenient locations to serve you in Lorraine, Huron, Sandusky, Port Clinton, and now at 36690 Detroit Road in Avon. First Federal Savings of Lorraine is an equal housing lender and FDIC insured. All Hi, our this tears is have reached Today and every day is the right time to support the American Red Cross. It gives disaster assistance to people when they need it most. You can help the victims of thousands of disasters across the country each year by making a financial gift to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund, which enables the Red Cross to provide shelter, food, counseling, and other assistance to those in need. Please call 1-800-HELP now. Together, we can save a life. Your one-stop place for something really special is Impressions, corner of Oberlin Avenue and Tower Boulevard. T-shirts and sweatshirts personally designed to your specific needs. Anything from bears, trains to zebras, and specially designed hats as well. And don't forget Impressions, your one-stop spot for school jackets. See Dave, the designer expert at Impressions, Oberlin Avenue at Tower Boulevard, right here in Lorraine. Welcome back to George Daniel Field. As we indicated, tonight is homecoming for the Lorraine Southview Saints. And we have on the track the couples that have been gathered. One will be selected as the queen, the other the king. And to the far right, we have Brittany Bartlebaugh, the daughter of Brian and Michelle Bartlebaugh. And uh, her companion, Maurice Bennett, the son of Maurice and Lourdes Bennett. Next to them, we have Anastasia Hellinger, the daughter of William and Pamela Hellinger, and Sean Candelario, the son of Jose and Yvette Candelario. The third and final senior couple, Gina Oli, the daughter of Jeff and Amy Oli, and Jose Cruz, the son of Orlando and Gerardina Olivencia. Then we have one junior couple, Ashley Armstrong, the daughter of Pam and Tim Armstrong, and Patrick McRae, the son of Cindy and Pat McRae. One sophomore couple, Larray Vaquara, the daughter of Teresa Torres, and Bradley Jones, the son of Glenda and Edward Jones. And one freshman couple, Katie Oley is the daughter of Jeff and Amy Oley, and Jose Martinez, the son of Lourdes Feliciano. And in a moment, we are going to Discover who the king and the queen of 2004, Lorraine Southview High School. And there they are. They've been crowned. Anastasia Hellinger, the daughter of William and Pamela Hellinger. And the king is Sean Candelario, the son of Jose and Yvette Candelario. And actually, they brought the freshman couple out first, followed by the sophomore couple, the junior couple, and then the three senior couples. But you've seen them all, and uh, you now have a shot of the king and the queen. We'll be back with the start of tonight's ball game right after this timeout. How you gonna build it? At Wiener Construction, you design it and we build it. It's America's best built hot dog. Start with the DD Weenie, the in betweeny Weenie, or the home wrecker on a fresh steam bun. Direct the crew to add anything from chili to cheese to 23 extra items and add ons. Then shovel in the french fries, potato pancakes, corn dogs, and more. Finish the job with a refreshing soda or beer. Wiener Construction, it's not a hot dog, it's a meal. <laughs> It's a sound we take for granted. Life seems so simple as a child, yet 500,000 children in Ohio have vision problems. Problems that if not detected early can lead to loss of sight and difficulty learning. Simple activities like riding a bike can become dangerous. When you register your vehicle or renew your license plates, add a dollar donation to the Save Our Sight Fund and help save the sight of Ohio's children. For more information, call 1-800-755-GROW. Thanks for giving to Save Our Sight. 
Back here at George Daniel Field, all set to get this game underway. Really don't have any clue as to who won the toss of the coin, but we can tell you the Admirals are kicking off defending the North goal. The Southview Saints will receive here in the first quarter and defend the South goal. Ron, I would believe that the Admirals might have deferred because they got the wind at their back in the first quarter. I don't believe they're going to kick and give them the win at the same time. So I bet they deferred to the second half. South, you opted to take the football, and King opted to take the win. That would be your professional guess. That would be my guess. Good enough. Rocky Ferraro, the 180-pound senior, doing the kicking off for the Admirals. We do have a brisk wind on this Friday, September 17th. And there's the opening kick to begin this ball game, taken on the five-yard line by the Saints up to the 20. 25, and finally downed, that being Derek Harvey. At about the 29-yard line, Jamie Adams making the tackle for the Admirals. It'll be first and 10 for the Saints. The ball just inside their own 30-yard line. Ron, we were here last night for the freshman game, and we were complaining about how humid it was. I think we could take a few of those degrees and a few more of that little humidity. It's a major change from last Absolutely. night. Absolutely. Well, we're getting hit with the fringe of Hurricane Ivan, now Tropical Storm Ivan. Gain of about two yards on the play by the Saints. The ball carrier, Juan Williams. 205-pound junior tackle made by Ryan Ransom. Ron, what you're going to see in, in a backyard rivalry like this is one of two things. Either they're, both teams are going to be very conservative because they don't want to turn the ball over, or it's just going to be wide open, shoot it out from the get-go. So I, the way the Saints are doing it, looks like they're going to just try to establish the run, not turn the ball over. Patrick McRae at quarterback. Hands the ball off to Juan Williams. Williams trying to find running room. He's going to be hit for a loss back to the 30-yard line. That'll bring up a third down and nine. Tackle made by P.J. Carter. Again, South, you opted to go to the short side. Again, for our viewers, Ron, they're wondering why South is over here. It is their home game. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> and we will be back here tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning for the Junior Varsity game, which gets underway Saturday at 10 a.m. If you're watching this in the wee hours of this Friday going into Saturday morning, come on out, see more high school football. Junior Varsity, Admiral King and Southview. McCray looking to pass, and he's tripped up. Craig Wood. Craig Wood on the stop. That brings up a fourth down and a punning situation for the Saints. That's just what the Admirals wanted, three and out, and now Southie's got to kick into a fairly brisk wind. The flag is uh, crackling on the north end of the stadium. On the fourth and nine, Josh White, 205-pound senior, will do the punting, standing on about his 17-yard line. Low snap, picked up off the ground. White puts the foot to the ball, and it's going to roll, and the Admirals will just let it roll. Down by the Saints on the Admiral King 44-yard line. The Admirals taking over first and 10. Kind of interesting to note, uh, the Morning Journal reporter covering tonight's game, Dan Gillis, had an opportunity to talk to uh, some of the football players on both sides of the field. And uh, Josh White was one of the players that he spoke to. Josh White felt very strong that this was going to be the year that the Saints were going to be victorious over the Admirals. In the past five years, the Admirals have defeated the Saints four out of five times, including a big win last year coming from behind. The pass intended for the Admirals wide receiver Jordan Simmons. Quarterback uh, James Pinkerton incomplete, second down and 10. In fact, the Admirals at one point in time last season uh, and Southview without a doubt was the favorite team uh, going into that ball game. The Admirals were trailing 12 to nothing and uh, wound up winning that game 14 to 12. And that uh, defeat by the Admirals uh, did not ensure a winning season for the Saints. They ended up five and five on the year. 
right up the middle and a first down for the Admirals, the first one in the ball game. It's Craig Wood. Craig Wood doing the job. I know, Ron, as, as a former coach, I would really want this game to be last on the season. I agree with that. I, I know 1,000%. When, when we used to play Lorraine High 8th, it was very, very difficult for us to get the kids back up to go to Sandusky and Finley. Uh, the rivalry games should be last, if at all possible. And the fact that both these teams are 0-3, the winner is going to get a big boost. And an interception by the Saints. Making that interception is Devin English. So what the Saints give it, the Saints take it back. Uh, Pinkerton just overthrew his man. Again, he didn't see the safety sitting back there, and he just overthrew him. You'll see him wide open. He throws it right to his hands. I think you can see a difference in philosophy. It looked like Southview was going to come out and try to run the ball and not do what King just did. And King came out and threw the ball, too, the first three times they ran that had the snap. So a little difference in philosophy early on. Well, the Saints are right back where they started initially after the kickoff on about their 29-yard line, first and 10. In motion is Ryan Harvey and Met yeah, after we, a gain of about a yard on the play. Dropped the ball, dropped the snap, and then had just he was lucky to pick it up. There's a, there's a case run where you just want your quarterback to fall on the ball instead of trying to pick it up. But luckily he uh, retrieved it and uh, fell forward for a couple gain of, of a yard. Second down and nine. The uh, player that uh, Dan interviewed for Admiral King, P.J. Carter, kind of brought out something interesting. Back when P.J. was a freshman, they beat Southview. They beat Southview when he was a sophomore on the JV team. They beat uh, Southview last year as a junior. So he feels that, again, the Admirals will continue the winning ways. Jarring tackle there by the Admirals. Ron Linkus. You know, Ron, I mentioned a couple weeks ago, that's, that's the one play in football that no one's ever been really able to explain to me why they run it, and that's an option to the short side. I have never, ever understood that. Mr. El Cisco and I used to argue for days over that play. <laughs> I used to tell him, you keep running it, and I'll defend it. Juan Williams, the ball carrier, picks up two yards on the play. It's third down and seven for Southview. Ryan Harvey in motion. McCray looking to pass and just beyond the outstretched hands of Ryan Harvey. Incomplete pass brings up a fourth and seven and again another punting situation for the Saints. Uh, Ron Link has put some pressure on the quarterback and made him throw it sooner than he wanted to. So far in the early going the Admirals have uh, won the field position battle. Josh White punting for the Saints, standing on his 20-yard line. Deep receivers Jordan Simmons and Paris Hilliard. The ball lands on the Admiral King 45, takes a Southview bounce, and it will be down by the Saints on the Admiral's 34-yard line. First and 10, the Admirals once again take over. Ron, both of those punts, um, neither were uh, ones you put on the highlight reel, but they've both been very effective. They've had no return, and it's given Southview a chance to play lineup and play defense. That's all you can ask out of a punter in high school. James Pinkerton, the quarterback in the passing department in the first three games, 34 completions out of 73 attempts for 540 yards. One of the leading quarterbacks in the area. The give is to Craig Wood, the lone running back. Wood breaks across the 35 up close to the 40. Gain of about five yards on the play. It's second down and five. In fact, uh, Pinkerton has thrown for three touchdowns, but he's also been intercepted three times. Make it four as of tonight. Pinkerton in the uh, shotgun. Looking to pass, holding on to the ball. There's a flag and probably a holding. Pinkerton picking up a first down, but it may be all for naught. And you know, Ron, that's the kind of play that'll drive a coach crazy. Absolutely. Clear on the other side of the field had nothing to do with the play. <laughs> that Holding is the call. Drive you abs. There's a 30 yard penalty. By the time they bring it back, spot it, take the 10 yards. That'll bring the ball 
back from the 39 where the yellow flag is located back to the 29 yard line and the, the line judge is the one that threw that so you know it had to be a wide receiver that that got caught holding and if that guy that he's blocking tackles that quarterback on a sweep on the far side he's going to get him 50 yards down the field so so it's going to be second down and 21 for the admirals instead of a big first down in southview territory and here again, there is that adage that Mark Campo talked about. We've been making mistakes. We're playing good football. We're making stupid mistakes. You know, in the books, Ron, that goes as a 10-yard penalty. But in actuality, it's probably close to 30 or 35. See, they brought the chains back. The chains thought it was going to be first down from there. And here again, I've always been under the impression you don't move those things until the official tells you to. Craig Wood, the ball carrier, gets up across the 35-yard line before he is driven out of bounds by the Saints. Sometimes, Ron, you end up with a, um, a chain crew that, you know, sometimes understands the game of football and they just get excited. And you're right, you don't move that till he tells you to go. Third down and nine yards to go for the Admirals. Pinkerton tucks it in and runs with the ball. He may be close to that first down if they spot it on the other side of the 45. He's got it. He is spotting it on the other side. All right. It should be a first and 10 for the Admirals. So signals the, uh, the referee. It's a big series for the Admirals. Southview had them second and 20, second and 21. And uh, Craig Wood got most of that penalty back and then uh, Pinkerton what they're doing Ron, is they're spreading the uh, Saints defense out and then just turning Pinkerton loose it's changing the play quarterback Pinkerton in the shotgun along with Craig Wood in the backfield and the handoff is to Craig he is hit right at the 45 yard line and a loose ball but I think the whistle blew so it's going to be second down a gain of about a yard on the play second and nine Tackle made by James Asif. Ron, that was a great read by Asif. He he was the uh, either the down line, outside linebacker or the uh, defensive end, and he just saw the guard pull and he just closed down and got Craig Wood at the line of scrimmage. Great defensive play, great read. Defensive end he is. Pinkerton again looking to pass, incomplete. The intended receiver, Jordan Simmons. Coming into tonight's ball game, Jordan Simmons with eight receptions for 146 yards, an 18.3 average. You know, Ron, one of the things that could be an advantage to both schools is they both run the same defense. So when they're practicing, they're actually practicing their defense. So that gives them a break when you're playing the same defense. Your kids understand the terminology and they, they know the assignments. Makes it a little easier to coach that week. Third and nine for the Admirals. Pinkerton back to pass again, being chased. Green play, Craig Wood at the 45, breaks loose. He's got the first down into Southview territory across the 40 to about the 38-yard line. Once again, Ron, the Admirals had five wideouts. They had three on the near side, four wideouts, one on the top, and they just threw it right over the top, all of them. And Wood just broke it to the outside. And as we talked the other day, he's got to get that ball in the outside arm. Had it hanging out there for the taking. So I'm sure the backfield, the running backs coach is going to talk to him about that. First down, the Admirals are moving the ball. Their third first down of the evening. Hand off again to Craig Wood. He is met after a gain of about a yard on the play, making the tackle for again. the Saints. Asif. Again, he's doing the right thing. He's reading the, the, the pulling lineman, and he's just stepping down unblocked. But the Admirals, again, have four wideouts. They're, they're spreading the Saints out. Second and eight. Yeah. 
Pinkerton looking to pass, coming to the near side, throws to the near side, and in and out of the hands of Paris Hilliard. Well, Ron, it looks like there were two admirals in the same spot, and I don't know that that was planned. Paris Hilliard and Jerry L. Nixon, the ball got uh, closer to Hilliard. It seems like the uh, admiral's coaching staff has made an adjustment. They're going to spread them out and let their two big runners, uh, Pinkerton, and they're, they're putting him on a, a rolling pocket like the Browns do with Garcia, get him away from the pressure. He's a good athlete. If he can turn the corner, run or pass, and that's what they seem to be doing. Ball is on the 36-yard line, third down and eight. Hand off to Craig Wood. Wood breaks across the 30-yard line. Not enough for a first down. It'll bring up a fourth, but the Admirals are in fourth down territory. I think what they did that time, Ron, was they ran to Ace of Side so they could block him. And maybe the other, the other defensive end didn't read it the same way, and they were able to pick up five or six yards Admirals are going to go for it. They're in four down territory. Ball is directly on the 30. And a flag. Now they don't Might have to worry be encroachment. About it. Encroachment on the Saints. That'll give the Admirals five yards and a first down. And I think another hair on Tony Shoulder's head just turned gray. I talked to Coach Shoulders before the game and he was in his zone. He was, he, he's fired up for this game. Oh, absolutely. You know, Ron, used to tell the kids when, when we played Lorraine High, when I was a king, you can't get up for the, you don't need me to get you up for this game. If you need me, then you're not, you're, you shouldn't be playing. First and 10 from the 25 yard line. Again, Craig Wood, the ball carrier, picks up a couple of yards on the play, gets the ball inside the 25. We have about the 23, gain of two. It's going to be second down and eight. One of the former players at Admiral King was he knows about backyard rivalry. Uh, <clears throat> Steve Dury sitting behind me watching the game with his dad and his brother. And he played linebacker at King and Saturday afternoon at George Daniel in October. It's like see no evil, hear no evil, and speak <laughs> no evil. All they have to do is put their hands in the appropriate places, right? Uh -huh. Always a pleasure to see the Durys, father and sons. Yeah, the good-looking one's not here, Joanne. <laughs> well, this is bachelor's night out. Pinkerton, the ball carrier, gets across the 15-yard line. I tell you what, Ron, he, he takes a few more shots like that. We're going to see the ball in the air a little more, I believe. And a first down for the Admirals. First and 10 from just inside the 15-yard line. Now the Admirals are going no huddle. Three wide receivers split wide to the left. Paris Hilliard down at the bottom of the screen. Make that Kevin Wilson. Kevin Wilson down at the bottom. And Pinkerton doesn't like what he is seeing. He is calling a timeout. So we have a timeout on the field. Timeout Admiral King. Say the Lorraine School Employees Credit Union will be celebrating their 50th anniversary in February 2005. Membership is limited to employees of the Lorraine Board of Education and their immediate family members living at home. The credit union offers savings accounts, checking, certificates of deposits, mortgages, and ATM. We have competitive loan rates on new and used autos. Call or stop by the credit union to discuss your financial needs. The staff at the credit union wishes the admirals and the saints good luck in their intercity rivalry. And don't forget to come and see the soccer games on Monday, September 20th, starting at 4 p.m. Office hours for the credit union are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And the credit union located at 4459, 4459 Oberlin Avenue, Suite 101. Is that in like S-W-E-E-T because Neil's there? S-U-I-T-E. <clears throat> Craig Wood, the ball carrier, gets the handoff. Gets up close to the 10-yard line. Pickup of about five yards on the play. It'll be second and five. You know, this. Uh, the Admirals in there, dark blue and the gold pants, it kind of looked like the Steelers with the bus back there. He set a record last week. He had the least yards and the most touchdowns. He had one yard total offense and three scores. Five carries. The bus is local now. He's not across the 
highway. Pinkerton looking to pass. He's going to hang on to the ball, but he is brought down from behind. Do believe he got inside the 10 yard line. I think what you're going to see here, maybe not on this series, Ron, but eventually the Admirals are going to put three wides to the wide side, one to the short side, and they're going to go to that short side guy because he's one on one. He's over there now. He's one on one at the top of the screen. Ball just inside the 10 yard line. It's third and five. They had spotted the ball earlier on about uh, the. Uh, 12 yard line. The first play was a pickup of three. I think we got a first down. No, oh, referee signaling fourth. They're signaling fourth down, so I think you're going to see the Admirals run the same play, or they might try to pull them off again, Ron, with a different cadence. It's a big, big stop for the Saints if they can do this. All right, Pinkerton barking out the play. And the give is to Craig Wood. Craig bulls his way forward. And the officials are going to stop the clock to make sure that enough uh, footage was picked up for a first down because it was fourth and one. And Wood's coming up limping again. Remember, the last time he played here, he, I think he played hurt against Illyria. And the officials are going to call a, an official timeout for measurement. What is Bring our, the chains uh, out. What does our director producer say? He first says down. first down. First it and goal. It looks like it's on the other side of the five. He's got it. First and goal for the Admirals. The ball just inside the five yard line. You know, Ron, taking a look at the field early on, how green it is. You've got five games being played here in five days. Freshman game yesterday, the varsity night, the JV Saturday, and two soccer games on Monday. And this field will withhold every bit of it. Always in excellent condition here. And a miscue there by Pinkerton. He picks up the ball, but he's going to be, due to the delay in picking up that ball, he's going to be brought back to about the eight yard line. Well, Ron, in that particular case, all you want him to do is recover the ball. Get the ball, get absolutely. Get the ball back. We'll take the five-yard loss. Just get the ball back. My, this Second and goal from the eight-yard line. The last play of the first quarter. We've got 22 seconds. The clock continues to run. We may get this play in unless they're Pinkerton looking over towards now, the bench. He's going to throw it. He better throw it now because he'll be into the wind next. It's going to get a going to take timeout again. Timeout called by the Admirals. Admiral King timeout with uh, six seconds remaining in the first quarter. No score in the ball game. Attention organizations looking for interesting programs. Lorraine City Schools is offering programs on the school district's history. The programs vary in length from 20 minutes to one hour and can be tailored to fit the organization's preference. There is no charge for any of these programs. Here's a list of programs that are available. By the shores of old Lake Erie, a history of Lorraine High School. How our schools got their names. The Lorraine School's timeline. Schools of the 1950s. Lorraine in 1953, that's a video along with a uh, discussion. And the uh, final video available is George Daniel Field, Lorraine's Common Ground. That's a video and a talk. These are presentations, I'm sorry, but it does have a video and it also has a talk as well. Now, to schedule one or more of these free programs, please contact Jim Smith, the school historian. You can reach him by calling 233-2240, 233-2240. Oh. Pinkerton to pass, in the end zone, it is not caught. Beyond the outstretched hands of the intended receiver, Paris Hilliard, covering on the play, Devin English for the Saints. English and uh, Juan Williams put a pretty good lick on Pinkerton. That's the end of the first quarter, Ron. That's the end of uh, 
Our first 12 minutes of play, no score on the scoreboard. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this timeout. Looking for the right color, the right style, the right price for your floor coverings? Well, you can find them all at Ted's Floor Coverings, the only place you need to shop for affordable custom flooring. Whether you're looking for area rugs, carpeting, laminates, ceramic, or marble, you'll enjoy browsing through one of the largest showrooms in Northeast Ohio. Their talented staff will even help with your design questions. Ted's is proud to showcase the Kathy Ireland Shades of America collection. Shop at Ted's Floor Covering, 668 Broadway, downtown Lorraine, a local company committed to our community. Ted Kalo, President. Back here at George Daniel Field, second quarter action getting underway with the Admirals, third and eight to reach the end zone. South, you took a timeout right at the snap. Wow. Did not like what they saw, apparently. So, Southview timeout on the field. Again, no score in the ball game. Just getting the second quarter underway. Kind of interesting to uh, point out, Barry, in the Lake Erie League, and this is not a Lake Erie League game. The action begins next week with uh, the Admiral King Admirals playing here at George Daniel Field against uh, Maple Heights, a game that you will see on TV 20. And the uh, Saints will be traveling to Lakewood to take on the Lakewood Rangers. Then in the first weekend in October, we will be here for two nights of football. On October 1st, the Southview Saints will be playing host here at George Daniel Field to the Warrensville Heights Tigers. And the Admirals then the following night on Saturday, October 2nd, will be playing host to the Cleveland Heights Tigers. So we're going to have a lot of Tigers in the tank. And the Indians just played the Detroit Tigers. How about that? Third and goal from the eight, Pinkerton. Throwing into the end zone, and Jerry L. Nixon, touchdown. Ron, that's a pass that was thrown that if he doesn't catch it, no one does, and that's the way it's supposed to be done. Throw it out there. Don't let the defender get to it. And the Admirals go on the board first here in the second quarter with 11.55 remaining. The second quarter just five seconds old, and the Admirals will go for the extra point, doing the uh, extra point kicking. Rocky Ferraro. Pinkerton will, no, it's a fake. Pinkerton holds and runs into the end zone. Two points for the Admirals. Was that a fake or was that a fake? <laughs> he faked out the play-by-play, -play, man. Absolutely. We were going to talk about Jerry L. Nixon uh, in the reception department. Uh, he had here six. Run. Here's the touchdown. And the inside guy went to the outside, and the Saints didn't uh, recover. We're going to say Jerry L. Nixon had uh, six receptions coming into tonight's ball game for 106 yards, a 17.2 average uh, per reception with two touchdowns. Now he's got three. So he's the leading scorer for the Admirals with a total of 18 points. Here's the extra point. The kicker's walking back. Yeah, it's like he had back. something in his eye. Well, he was like measuring off his steps, and then <laughs> Pinkerton just took the snap and took off. Well, as we've indicated, when it comes to this particular game, it's amazing how the coaches come up with the hocus-pocus plays. Oh, we're going to see a few more. I'm sure. The night is young. And the Saints are trailing by eight points, so they're going to have to do something as the kickoff by Rocky Ferraro. Taken on the 17-yard line and hit immediately at about the 30. Derek Harvey. It'll be first and 10 for the Saints. Making that strong tackle, Evan Shaw for the Admirals. Well, Ron, the Saints just have to come out and settle down. Stick to their game plan. It's early yet. 
First and 10 from their own 30 yard line. Coming wide to the right, Robert Laurenti. The give is to Juan Williams. Williams gets about five yards on the play to the 35. It's going to be second and five. Ron, this is the kind of game where the city, the schools in Lorraine are the winners because all the fans here are Lorraine fans one side or the other. So the money kind of stays here. All of the raffles kind of stay here. And so the city of Lorraine's a winner in this kind of a game. Absolutely. Even though we do not have packed stands on either side, we do have a good crowd here tonight. And we congratulate those people who have taken the time to come out in Southview with its first, first, first down of the evening. And Juan Williams carrying that ball into Admiral King territory across the Admiral's 40-yard line to about the 39, where it's going to be first and 10 for Southview. Right. The offense came alive on that play. He broke that, and then he carried the last two Admirals 10 yards for the first down. That's a big play. That's what the Saints need. And with weather like this, with the wind, field position becomes very, very important as the game goes on. Derek Harvey in motion. The give is to Juan Williams. Hit at the line of scrimmage, but bowls his way forward, picking up five yards on the play across the 35. It'll be second and five. Tackle made by Anthony Linden. Ron, there's a case where the Admiral's defensive coaching staff had the right defense called, had the players in the right spot. They missed the tackle, and he gained five yards. This is the first start for Juan Williams in the backfield for the Saints this season, at least here at George Daniel Field in games that we have covered on TV 20. 205-pound junior, Derek Harvey. There's a counter. Misdirection run by the... Uh... And they're going to say his knee touched down back on the 37-yard line. And we can't give Julius Blackman credit for the tackle. because <laughs> We'll give that to the referee. Or the green grass. Or the green grass. He spotted it. Third down and seven for the Southview Saints. A big third down play for them now. Oh, I got to believe they're in two down territory. McCray looking to pass. And incomplete in and out of the hands of Ryan Harvey. He had it. He just could not hang on. Again, it looked like the Saints had two guys in the same area, which brings more defenders. See, I'm wondering if that ball was even thrown to him. He was double covered because the defender saw the ball coming and left his man. So, got to get the people spread out. Fourth and seven from the 36 yard line. Derek Harvey in motion. McCray looking to pass far side and almost intercepted by Admiral King's Rashawn Lagarde. It was in and out of his hands as well. Well, that's a plus to the Admirals that he right, didn't because catch. he would have been tackled back there. This way they take over on downs, first and ten from their own 36-yard line. So it's it hard worked to, out. It's hard to tell the defender, you know, <laughs> yeah. don't don't intercept the ball. Intercepted if you've got a clear field and <laughs> think you can go all the way. Can't but I don't think that would have been the case. Hard to fault a kid for doing that. And we have a flag. Flag on the far side of the field. The official right away. Oh, oh. they um, they uh, flagged the the sidelines. 
Let's see if it's uh, unsportsmanlike. Uh, he, he, just, uh, he just warned him. Okay, a warning. Let's not get too close to the sideline. Still first and 10, and the give is to Craig Wood. Wood breaks free, picks up a first down into Southview territory, crossing the midstripe. They'll spot it on about the 49-yard line where it's going to be first and 10. Ron, he's running harder than, than I've seen him run all year, and, and I still say that in the Elyria game he was hurt. He tried to play hurt. He's just going through the middle like it's his. And right now, the Admirals are basically kind of doing what they want to do. Chain Gang's having a real difficult time over there. Pinkerton looking to pass, far side. Almost completed, but right at the line of scrimmage, and that would have been an immediate tackle. Jerry L. Nixon over there. I think he took his eyes off the ball. To, I think he heard the Southview uh, defender coming. So um, it's a little lack of concentration there, but like you say, it wouldn't have been much of a gain anyway. Second and 10. Two of the Admirals that uh, have been quite prevalent in their football uh, play. Terrence Mims and Mark Jones, both on the DL, disabled list, with injuries. Craig Wood again gets the uh, handoff from quarterback uh, Pinkerton. Ron, you mentioned in the uh, when you did the starting lineups that uh, Robert Lorente playing safety and wide receiver for the Saints is a uh, Warren Catholic player. Admiral King has one also in uh, Kredovix. Matt Kredovic, a starting guard for the Admirals, is from Lorraine Catholic. Gain of five, third down and five, and the Admirals call another timeout. That's their last one. All right, timeout on the field with the score, Admiral King eight, Southview nothing. We'll be back right after this. CC's Pizza, all you can eat for only $3.99. CC's Buffet has 16 kinds of great tasting pizza, pasta, salad, and desserts, all you can eat for only $3.99. And CC's was voted number one for overall customer satisfaction. Best buffet that you can find, lunch and dinner anytime. Let's go to CC's Pizza. Great taste at a great price. On the third and five for the Admirals, Pinkerton in the shotgun. Some movement on the Southview defensive line, but they were able to get back without getting into the neutral zone. And again, the give is to Craig Wood. Wood picks up the first down across the 35-yard line to Ronick, about the 33. I gotta believe that the reason the Admirals have um, used all three timeouts is because of this new uh, offensive scheme they're running where it's no huddle and and uh, Pinkerton's getting the plays from the sidelines. And I think that's uh, caused them some confusion and now they can't stop the clock, so. Craig Wood again, the ball carrier, another five yards and then some on the carry. They haven't stopped it, so. Teddy Molina making the tackle for the Saints. And who's getting up off the bottom of the pile there? It's Looks like they'll spot the ball on about the 28-yard line. And there was Josh White on the bottom also. That's A six gain yards. of six yards, second down and four. Josh White last year had 111 tackles so far. Coming into this game this year, 41 tackles. The Saints defensive standout. Pinkerton with the ball, reaches out in hopes of picking up the first down, but I think he's going to be a bit short. You know, you gotta be real careful doing that, sticking that ball out there just to get an extra foot. You know, we were talking during the break. It's unfortunate the, that one of the few road games, independent games that the Buckeyes have is in North Carolina tomorrow. We'll see if Ivan has anything to do with the game being played there. Gain of three yards on the play by Pinkerton. Third down and one. The ball directly on the 25-yard line. Craig Wood again, the ball carrier. 
And it looks like he has picked up the first down. Ron, the, the best that the Saints can do at this point defensively is they're meeting Craig Wood on their side of the football. And, you know, strategically what you want to do is to make him make his moves on his side of the field. And right now the Admiral offensive line providing enough uh, impetus for Craig Wood to find open ground. From the 23-yard line, first and 10. Down to six minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Admirals leading eight to nothing again. Craig Wood breaks three. Oh, he dropped the ball. Tackles and a fumble on the play. Saints have the football. And it's picked up by 21. 81 or 21? 21. Juan Williams. Williams. That was a pretty good collision there between uh, Craig Wood and and they're saying that uh, Craig Wood lost the ball before he hit the ground. Oh, it's out. It was out. That's a good call. So the turnover gives the Saints the ball as the Admirals were driving towards the end zone. Now the Saints will have an opportunity to go the other way. They've got a first and 10 from their own 17-yard line. Well, Ron, the, the only thing that's stopping the Admirals this half is, uh, there's Joe, the ball is out clear. Good job, Joe. Instant replay man got a perfect shot of that. You give to Juan Williams. We may have Williams to. gets across the 25-yard line, picks up good yardage. Rashawn Lagarde making the tackle for the Admirals. We may have to suggest that we can go to instant replay on any game play to George Daniel. They'll spot the ball on the 26-yard line. A gain of nine yards on the play, second down and one. Referees need to review a play. We can do that. <laughs> I would not be want to be the official that would have to run up and down <laughs> the steps in this stadium. That's they'd a make, workout. They'd make the athletic director do that. Uh, well, right now, Ron, the... The goal of the Saints has to be to establish some kind of offense because they've done absolutely nothing. Juan Williams again, the ball carrier, picks up the first down for the Saints. First and 10 from their own 28-yard line. Well, last night the Admirals drew first blood. The freshman team beats off you 22 to 8. 22 to 8. All touchdowns scored on turnovers. And that put the Admiral King freshman team 4-0 on the season and the Saints freshman team 1-3. Juan Williams breaks away from a tackle. He's in the open and finally brought down in Admiral King territory at about the 40-yard line. What an outstanding run by Juan Williams. The uh, second one he's had tonight, bringing the ball from Saints territory into Admiral King territory. First and 10 for Southview from the Admiral King 40-yard line. Well, just like the Admirals, the Saints haven't figured how to stop Craig Wood. And right now, it looks like the Admirals haven't figured how to stop uh, number 21. Juan Williams. Juan Williams is running. Derek Harvey in motion. The give is to Harvey. Harvey breaks loose, and there's a flag. Harvey to the 20. He's to the 10, and trip from behind, and another flag. We've got a flag on the 38-yard line and a flag on the 17-yard line. I don't know what the second one. I know the first one's going to be holding. I don't have a clue what the second one was. He's got holding also. Well, hate to harp on it, but again, another classic example of... Uh, just not playing it heads up. Well, Ron, you don't you don't know that that's how that he was able to break freeze because they held the man. <laughs> that's true. They might have had him stop, but they they had two. The second one I didn't I didn't even come close to seeing. I was watching him pursue. We'll see it here. First guy throws a flag. Well, there was a second one over there. I saw that he tackled him. Held the defender, so. Ball is back to the 48-yard line where 
It's first down once again, first and 18. Well, the Admirals were able to capitalize on a holding penalty. Let's see if the Saints can duplicate that and uh, pick up the yardage, get the first down, and move the ball. Broken up, pass play on the uh, Ron Linkus, getting his hand on the ball, knocking it to the ground. The intended receiver for Southview, Robert Laurenti. We used to call that the hook to curl zone, and that linebacker knows he's got to float out not only deep, but he's got to get wide, and he was right in the path of the ball. Read it perfectly. <laughs> Ryan Redinger, number 40 now in the ball game, split wide to the left for the Southview Saints. McCray back to pass and again broken up and almost intercepted by Admiral King's Rashawn Lagarde. You know, Ron, that's probably one of the oldest drills in football is the tip drill. Every day, five, ten minutes, you practice throwing the ball up, tipping it, keeping it alive for your defense to help. It's tip drill all over the place. Ryan Redinger was the intended receiver on the incomplete pass. That makes it now third and 18. Derek Harvey in motion. McCray back to pass, being chased screen. And on the reception for the Saints, Jamal Hassan picks up uh, quite a bit of yardage there. I don't believe it's going to be enough for a first down. Yes, yes it, it is. is. Well, you know, Ron, that's the same play the Admirals ran. It was a screen. They sent all the receivers out, cleared the zone out, and threw it out in the flat. The Admirals was a, a screen in the middle but basically the same design play, and it's been successful for both. First and 10 for the Saints on the Admiral King 28-yard line. We've got four minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Saints trail eight to nothing. The give is to Juan Williams. Williams across the 25-yard line to about the 18. Ron, the Admirals were in the backfield, and they, they were looking to the quarterback, you gotta tackle everybody. Somebody's got Officials some. have called a timeout briefly for an equipment adjustment. One of the uh, admirals. Yeah, they will try to fix that on the field and if it's- Anthony Linden. If it's not repairable, then the young man has to leave the game until he gets it fixed, but they'll give him a chance to get it straightened around there. Gain of five yards, second down and five for the Saints. Ryan Harvey in motion. The give is to Juan uh, Williams. Juan Williams breaking clear across the 10-yard line. It's going to be first and goal for the Saints. The ball on about the six-yard line. Making the tackle for the Admirals, Michael Cook. Ron, that's just, this is exactly what uh, Tony Shoulders and his staff want. A nice long drive, run the clock. End the first half on a winning note, tie up anybody's game so, so far. From the six yard line, first and goal. Juan Williams again gets the handoff. Juan Williams up close to the goal line, up to about the two yard line. Gain of four on the play. It should be second down and goal from the two. Right, right now it's just a matter of uh, man on man because I think almost everybody in the stadium knows who's going to get the ball the next three times. <laughs> and I'm certainly believing the Admirals know who's going to get it. Yeah. Have to ask Coach Shoulders where this guy's been for three games. I know. <laughs> And the give, as you indicated, Juan Williams, he's in the end zone, touchdown. With two minutes, 32 seconds remaining in the second quarter of play, the Southview Saints have come to within two points of tying this ball game. 
Do you go for the one sure point, or do you go for the two and tie it up, Barry? I think you got to go for the two. It doesn't make a difference whether you're behind one or behind two. So field goal will win it either way or tie it up safety. So I got to believe they got to go for it. And that's exactly what they're going to do, go for the two extra points. Would you give the ball to Juan Williams? Well, why not? Pitch to Juan Williams, 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 and he's in the end zone. No, no. no. They say his knee touched before the ball went into the end zone. I believe it did. I believe his knee yeah. hit, and then he reached forward. He's talking to the official, pleading his case. We'll see him sweep it here. And he's hurt, coming off right the field there, right now. Down. Then he's over. That's a good call. Another good job by Mr. Juan Williams uh, must have got a good jab on that one because uh, he, he is holding his uh, chest area. Anyway, uh, the try for the two extra points unsuccessful. The score with 232 remaining in the first half. Admiral King 8, Southview 6. And the Saints will kick off to the Admirals. Chris Garcia, the 160-pound freshman. We saw quite a bit of him in that freshman game yesterday evening, Barry, both on offense and defense. I asked Coach Shoulders about that. Since he played so much football uh, for the freshman team, how is it that he's able to play tonight? Well, you have to have two plays in a row what I, I to thought, qualify right. for a quarter. So he's never going to have two plays in a row, and that fifth quarter will be like. That may be why they didn't kick the extra point, because then it's two plays in a row. The extra point, now the kickoff would be considered two plays. So there you go. Maybe that factored in. But then, <clears throat> still, I, I think even. Regardless of that, I think you've got to go for the two in that case to tie it up. I don't think it makes a difference, 8-7 or 8-6. So I, I believe that even if he didn't have to worry about that. but In the uh, Erie division of the Lake Erie League, Southview and Shaw are the only two teams that have yet to win a ball game this season. And in the Lake Division, Admiral King is the only team not to have won a ball game thus far. And that kickoff with the wind behind him going in and out of the end zone, automatic touchback. The Admirals will take over first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Looking at the Erie Division of the Lake Erie League, Garfield Heights with a 3 0 record, Maple Heights 3 0. Maple Heights will be here at Georgia Daniel Stadium next week, Friday, to take on the Admiral King Admirals. Warrensville Heights 3 0, Bedford 2 1, Shaw and Southview 0 3. In the Lake Division of the Lake Erie League, Shaker Heights is 2-1, Cleveland Heights 1-2, Lakewood 1-2, Mentor surprisingly 1-2, Euclid 1-2, Admiral King 0-3. The give this time is to the Admiral's Rashawn Lagarde. Well, First time he's carried the ball. I really thought I watched last week where Maple Heights got beat by one of the big teams in Cleveland. Whether it was, I might have been wrong, but I really thought it was that they got beat play Benedictine or somebody like to that effect. But. No gain on the play, second down and 10, the ball still on the 20 yard line. Again, the give is to Rashawn Lagarde coming to the 25, the 30, picks up a first down and driven out of bounds here on the near side. It'll be first and 10, no yellow flags on the field. One minute and 45 seconds uh, remaining here in the first half as the clock stops while they move the chains. Wondering if something might be wrong with Craig Wood or they're just giving him a breather in the closing moments of uh, this second quarter. And a fumble by Lagarde. The pitch from Pinkerton to oh, Rashawn Lagarde. They're going to call that an incomplete pass. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a break for the Admirals, but I really thought that was a... <laughs> Coaching staff is letting me know that was a planned pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's down there going like this. 
he's wiping his brow. They, that was not a pad. They got a break there. Second and uh, now it should be third and ten. No, Lagarde got a first down, didn't he? Yes. On the run when he got out of bounds, so it is second down. Oh, second ten, and you're you're right. Lagarde once again picking up a first down for the Admirals, getting up to the 45-yard line. What they want to do now, Ron, is just make sure that uh, they don't turn the ball over. I mean, it'd be nice to go down the field and score. Southview's taking a timeout. Rashawn Lagarde, six foot three, 175-pound junior, timeout on the field. With the score, Admiral King eight, Southview six. We'll be back right after this. There is strength in our numbers. Our call is to action, to practice what we preach. Be there to care. Our passion is compassion. We're only human, but together we're humane. Our letters stand for taking a stand, for taking the lead, for filling the need, the American Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Be part of our heart. On a first and ten for the Admirals, the pitch this time successful to look. Rashawn Lagarde gets about five yards on the play up to the mid-stripe. It'll be second and five with well, one minute and 14 seconds, clock continuing to run. I'm waiting to see whether the uh, stat guys up here, the journal guys, write that as a pass and give uh, Pinkerton uh, four yards, or are they going to count that as a run? <laughs> <laughs> if they count, the referees counted as a pass, so that was the same play. Pinkerton passing this time. Down the near side, Jerry Al Nixon, too far. Incomplete, stopping the clock with 50 seconds remaining, and that'll bring up a third down and five. Speaking of that run, we have something else uh, a little different this evening. Uh, both bands will be featured at halftime, brought to you by the Palace Civic Theater. So both bands will be shown instead of just the home band. Southview Stop. takes their last time out. All right, we do have time out on the field. Southview uh, trailing by two points, eight to six in this ball game. And uh, of course, as Barry pointed out, uh, you'll be seeing, first of all, the Lorraine Admiral King High School Varsity Marching Band. And that will be followed by the Lorraine Southview Varsity Marching Band, all brought to you by the Palace Civic Center, 6th and Broadway, downtown Lorraine. And uh, want to let you know that if you're watching us on this late Friday night, uh, the movie this weekend, and the only chance that you'll have to see it is Sunday, September 19th at 7 p.m., is uh, a movie about uh, uh, a chicken farm. It's called White Chicks, <laughs> rated PG-13. Now, it's not about a farm. It's really... Uh, it's a hilarious comedy is what it is about two ambitious but unlucky FBI agents who go deep undercover as female high society debutantes to infiltrate the sophisticated world of the Hamptons to investigate a kidnapping ring. Running play by the Admirals did not get too much yardage on that one, maybe a yard at the most. That'll bring up a fourth down. And since neither team has a timeout remaining, 30 seconds, clock continues to run. The Admirals are going to go for it on the fourth down. The ball on the Saints 49 yard line. What they have to be careful, Ron, if they down the ball, Sofiu gets it. Oh, he's gonna run a pass. That's Pinkerton probably... looking to pass. He's going to run with it. And he is met just shy of the first down. Nice. Just shy of the 45-yard line, and he had to get beyond the 45 to pick up the first down, but that uh, stops the clock with six seconds, so the Saints will have time for one play, possibly, unless the clock continues the moment the ball is put in. Not on a change of possession, Not on I think. a change of possession, no. So the Saints will get a chance for one last play. And by the way, that movie on Sunday, September 19th, White Chicks rated PG-13. You get a free box of popcorn with each and every full paid admission. And admission is $3 for all ages. 
And the movie begins at 7 p.m. Sunday, September 19th. That's at the Palace Civic Center, 6th and Broadway, downtown Lorraine. All right, the final play of the first half. McCray looking to pass, throws the long one downfield, incomplete. Nobody had a chance to put a hand on it. Lorente was behind all that crowd. If they'd kind of tipped it up a little bit. All right, the first half coming to an end with the score, Admiral King eight, Southview six, and the two bands will be taking the field to entertain the fans here and to entertain you at home as well. In addition to the movie Sunday, September 19th at 7 p.m., White Chicks rated PG-13. Keep in mind that if you're watching this game in the early morning hours of uh, Friday going into Saturday, uh, Saturday, September 18th, on the stage of the Palace Civic Center is going to be the 50th anniversary of rock and roll featuring Danny and the Juniors and Bill Haley's Comets. Then looking ahead to the last weekend in September, Friday the 24th and Sunday the 26th, there will be the movie A Cinderella Story Once Upon a Time Can Happen Anytime. Admission $3 all ages and again a free box of popcorn with a full paid admission. The movie lets out at 8.30 p.m. It's rated PG. In this twisted and hilarious update of the classic fairy tale, high school senior Sam Montgomery lives at the beck and call of her self-obsessed stepmother, Fiona, and her sinfully wicked stepsisters. Sam finds her less than sparkling social life wonderfully complicated when she meets her Prince Charming online. So if you want to see an updated modern version of Cinderella, get to the Palace Civic Center, 6th and Broadway, downtown Lorraine on Friday, the 24th of September and Sunday, the 26th of September, showtime, 7 p.m., admission $3. That's the Palace Civic Center. Enjoy the bands.
All right, there you have the two uh, high school varsity marching bands, the Admiral King and Southview Varsity Marching Bands with an outstanding halftime show for your enjoyment. And all brought to you by the Palace Civic Center, 6th and Broadway in downtown Lorraine. A reminder that on Sunday, September 19th at 7 p.m., the movie is White Chicks, rated PG-13. And on Friday, September 24th and Sunday, September 26th, the movie is A Cinderella Story. Once upon a time, it can happen anytime. Admission is $3 for all ages, and there will be a free box of popcorn issued with every full paid admission. Those are the movies playing this month in September at the Palace Civic Center. And a reminder, too, on uh, Saturday, the 25th of September, I erroneously said the 18th. I certainly do mean the 25th of September. The movie, or not the movie, the 50th anniversary of rock and roll featuring Danny and the Juniors and Bill Haley's Comets, admission $29. You can contact the Palace at 245-2323 for ticket information. We'll be back with the start of the second half right after this. Time out. Hi, I'm Bob McGrath. And I'm Big Bird. And we love to make music. Music can help kids learn. Did you know that making music, any music... Like Twinkle Twinkle? All uh, right, like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star can help your child with language, reading, and even math. And it's lots of fun, too. To find out how children learn and grow with music, visit www.amc-music.org. And you'll see... Music works wonders. Yeah, it sure does. Looking for the right color, the right style, the right price for your floor coverings? Well, you can find them all at Ted's Floor Coverings, the only place you need to shop for affordable custom flooring. Whether you're looking for area rugs, carpeting, laminates, ceramic, or marble, you'll enjoy browsing through one of the largest showrooms in Northeast Ohio. Their talented staff will even help with your design questions. Ted's is proud to showcase the Kathy Ireland Shades of America collection. Shop at Ted's Floor Covering, 668 Broadway, downtown Lorraine. A local company committed to our community. Ted Kalo, President. Since 1921, your hometown financial professionals at First Federal Savings of Lorraine have dedicated themselves to meeting the financial needs of their customers and surrounding communities. They offer a wide variety of financial investments as well as home mortgages to meet your every need. Loans on boats, cars, mobile homes, and other worthwhile purchases are also available. Whatever your financial need, First Federal Savings of Lorraine is ready to help. Seven convenient locations to serve you in Lorraine, Huron, Sandusky, Port Clinton, and now at 36690 Detroit Road in Avon. First Federal Savings of Lorraine is an equal housing lender and FDIC insured. Back here at George Daniel Field. Second half action ready to get underway. I'm Ron Bacalar along with my partner Barry Buck, our cameraman, producer, and director Joe Bach. And our score is Admiral King 8 and Southview 6. Ron, an interesting twist here. Uh, the Admirals had the option to receive the ball and Southview chose to take the wind in the fourth quarter. So the Admirals are going to have the ball and the wind in the third quarter. Tony Shoulders must believe that he's going to be around in this game in the fourth quarter and the wind might be a factor. So he's opted to give uh, Admirals the ball and the wind. Pretty good, uh, pretty interesting decision. And those of you watching who were not here Friday night at George Daniel Field, it is a brisk wind. And a wall being set up as the Ooh. ball carrier, Robert Laurenti. Nope. Laurenti's for South. I'm sorry, I got the <laughs> wrong chart in front of me. That might got be Jordan, Jordan Simmons. Simmons. <laughs> Thought Laurenti had a blue shirt on, but yes. I'm not sure. His parents are sitting down here in the front, so I figure he's on the south <laughs> side. Anyway, the wall broke down. Simmons didn't get that much on the kickoff return. The ball is on the 26-yard line. First and 10 for the Admirals. And the give is to LaShawn Lagarde. 
Again, Craig Wood not in the ball game. Yeah, Ron, your uh, observation might be correct that he may be injured. Rashawn Lagarde uh, bringing the ball up to the 30-yard line, a gain of four yards on the play, second down and a long six. Make it a gain of three, third, second down and seven. Pinkerton back to pass, coming to the near side. Jerry Al Nixon overthrown. He was in the clear. Ron, if we can get um, our cameraman to take a shot at the 25-yard uh, line of the Admiral King side, we'll see uh, Craig Wood standing there with his hands on his hip and his helmet on the track. So I would assume that he, he we won't see him back. The other 25, Joe, if that's what you were. Okay. <laughs> but he's down on the 25-yard line. Hands on his hip, so I assume that uh, he won't be back. Mm. Thank you to the Durys for spotting that for me. Third and seven, Pinkerton looking to pass. Got a receiver open, Jerry Al Nixon, first down into Southview territory, finally brought down at about the 41-yard line. Making the stop, Devin English. Well, Ron, while we got a little break here. Well, and there's a flag back on oh, yes, the 40-yard line. Didn't see that. Again, they're just shooting themselves in the foot, both sides. Every time they Absolutely. get a big game, they just. Well, while they're sorting that out, Ron, we've been joined in the booth by uh, Jillian Van Wagner, tennis star, former WLCS uh, reporter. Trying to talk her into coming back. Well, she did some with the volleyball yes, game did. over at Admiral King, so it's not exactly like former. Well, I think she continuing. Likes, she must like volleyball more than she likes football, so we'll see if she's she said she might come back. Well, that one's going to be marched off against the Saints, and the ball is now on the 30-yard line. I'm trying to figure out I didn't I didn't see a signal as to what he called. See if any of the reporters know that. It's a 10 yard penalty, so. First and 10 for the Admirals on the Southview 30 yard line. Pinkerton fakes the handoff oh. to Lagarde and he is smacked and it's intercepted. The short pass intercepted by Patrick McCray from quarterback Man. to quarterback. Pinkerton stood in there like a professional quarter. Like and he just got smacked. He was hit by Josh, Josh White. White. Wow. That's a big time collision there. And the ball's up for grabs and waiting for someone to fair catch it and take off. But that was a big time hit. Pinkerton had raised his arm and his whole body was just wide open for a shot. From the 27 and a half yard line, first and 10 for the Saints. Pitch comes back to Derek Harvey, and there's a flag in the backfield. That's going to be a hold. holding call against the Saints. Ron, I see our uh, interim athletic directors here. We need to thank him for the refreshments and refreshments, of course, in the press box for the media and the TV broadcast crew. Well, that's media and guests and guests. Compliments of uh, Scorchers, 9th and Broadway downtown Lorraine, and Topps Supermarket in the center of Sheffield. And CC's Pizza, located in the Sears Hardware Plaza on Cooper Foster Park Road. I was there the other night. On Lorraine's west side. Wife and I have been there a few times. Enjoy it. You don't even have to eat pizza. You no, just you eat don't. salad and dessert. And I love that apple pie pizza. Derek Harvey, the ball carrier. Uh, Mr. Yunker informed us that Costco uh, fed both teams after school, before the game. So tip of the hat to uh, Costco and company for providing food for the players and coaches. If I had a hat on, I would tip it. Oh, I got one, so. And you just tipped it. Yes, I did. Thank all of our sponsors. It's second for down kids. for the Southview Saints, second down and 18. 
McCray looking to pass, incomplete, intended for Derek Harvey in the flats. That one was pretty well covered, so. Here in the early goings of the third quarter for the Southview Saints, it's been Derek Harvey, Derek Harvey, Derek Harvey, and uh, wondering if there's a problem with uh, Juan Williams. As I indicated to you, when Juan went into the end zone on that uh, extra point attempt, uh, he came out uh, visibly looking like he was in a world of hurt. I don't see him on the sidelines. I'm looking for number 21. So both uh, backs that ran very well in the first half. Well, I see Juan Williams back there now. Yes, he is. So. McCray looking to pass over to the far side. Connects with Derek Harvey. First down for the Southview Saints up to their own 45-yard line before he is pushed out of bounds. Over there covering for the Admirals, Rashawn Lagarde. Well, we'll see uh, McCray step out of the pocket. Just enough time to let his receiver clear the defense. And he throws a perfect strike, and it's a big play for the Saints. Also covering on the play for the Admirals, Kevin Wilson. Well, the Saints were uh, 15 yards away from the ball. They're going to get tired just getting up to the line of scrimmage. First and 10 from their own 45 yard line. Juan Williams now for the first time in the second half carries, gets up close to the 50 yard line. Ball will be spotted just inside the 50. Gain of five yards on the play, second down and five. You know, it's not like the uh, wind would be blowing his uh, voice into the huddle, it's going the opposite direction. I see now they've kind of adjusted and got back to the 10. Give is to Ryan Harvey. He slips in the backfield. Loss of maybe a yard on the play. That'll bring up a third down. Ryan Ransom covering for the Admirals. You know, with uh, Craig Wood not in the ball game, Ron, it's going to make our uh, uh, Palace player of the game a little more difficult now to pick. He was running away with it there for a while. I have to agree with that, definitely. So now it's gonna, we may have to get Jillian in the vote here. As she laughs when I talk about her. On the third and five. No. Nope. No, that was uh, the sure. ground first and then bounced up into the hands of uh, Kevin Wilson. Incomplete pass brings up a fourth down and a punting situation for the Saints as they just could not uh, capitalize on the opportunity to get the ball down the field. That's a play that Omar would have been proud of, that short hop and pick up. Jordan Simmons and Paris Hilliard, deep receivers for the Admirals on this punt. Josh White punting, high punt. Fair catch being called for by Jordan Simmons and wow. he downs the ball on his 29-yard line. So the Admirals take over first and 10 from their own 29. We indicated back in the first half that the Admirals have uh, two of their outstanding players on the disabled uh, list, Terrence, Terrence Mims and Mark Jones. Just to give you an example, Terrence Mims in the reception department, eight receptions coming into uh, or after the third game last week with 91 total yards, 11.4 average. The leading rusher, with uh, 175 yards on 40 carries, a 4.4 average. And now Craig Wood on the sidelines with an injury. Long pass down the field on the far side, Jerry L. Nixon, and there's a flag. Well, what you got there, Ron, in, in high school, it's only a 15-yard penalty. And there was a lot of bumping and running going on there. And it looks like they've let, they've been letting them do that. I'm not so sure why he pulled it this time. C 
see it on the replay here, but I don't know if we'll be able to catch it. But a lot of bumping over there. But I thought the ball was how about overthrown it was for one thing, definitely uncatchable. But again, not like the pros where it's a spot foul. It's a 15-yard penalty. Pass interference against the Saints brings the ball up to the Admiral King 44-yard line, first and ten. Many of the Southview fans here on the near side not too happy with that call. Rashawn Lagarde gets the handoff, gets across the 45, maybe picks up two yards on the play. Looks more like maybe one yard. Gain of a yard, second down and nine. You know, Ron, usually when the score is 8-6, game's not too exciting. You know, but this game has been back and forth, up and down, and neither team can get past the 20, but. Fake handoff to Lagarde, Pinkerton keeping the ball across the 50, out of bounds. He'll be shy of the first down. Looks like they'll spot the ball on about the 48 yard line. So it's going to bring up a third and two. Really, really helps your offense run when your second best runner is your quarterback because now it really puts a strain on the defense as to whether he's going to run it or going to throw it. And they have played exclusively from the shotgun tonight, haven't they? Yes, they have. I cannot recall seeing uh, Pinkerton under center. And every snap's been on the button. Rashawn Lagarde, the ball carrier, does not pick up the first down. In fact, if anything, thrown for a slight loss. Joey Kazura coming in on that jarring tackle. Well, you know, I think Lagarde didn't get the ball cleanly to start. Looked like he was juggling it running through. No, he had it, and he just got popped. Kazura just filled the hole and just popped him. On the fourth and three from the 49-yard line, it's going to be a punting situation for the Admirals. First one tonight, is it First not? one for the Admirals. Rocky Ferraro will do the punting, standing back on his own 38-yard line. Deep for the uh, Southview Saints. Robert Laurenti lets the ball roll, and it goes out of bounds at about the 11-yard line. So the Saints will take over from their own 11, first and 10. Well, Farrar did exactly what he needed to do. He just put it up in the air and let the wind take it, and it got a good bounce, and it uh, rolled inside to 15. So the Saints are starting, well, if we had the sun out, they'd be in the shadow of their own goalpost. Wonder if we'll see sunshine tomorrow morning. Uh, I'll predict no. Well, speaking of tomorrow morning, uh, TV 20 will be here at George Daniel Field for the third straight day in a row. Yesterday, we covered the freshman game won by the Admirals 22 to eight. And by the way, you'll be able to see that game if you haven't already today on Friday. It was shown on Friday. You'll be able to see it at uh, three o'clock this morning. Sunday morning. Sunday morning, three o'clock Sunday morning. 3 p.m. Sunday afternoon and 8 p.m. Sunday evening. That's the Admiral King Southview freshman game. Again, repeating those times if you're suffering from insomnia and can't sleep, 3 o'clock Sunday morning, 3 p.m. Sunday afternoon, and 8 p.m. Sunday evening. Juan Williams, the ball carrier for the Saints. Picks up good yardage across the 15-yard line to about the 17. Gain of six yards should be second down and four. See, the Browns are going to cooperate and let you watch the first half because they don't play till four on Sunday. So you can start your football and watch the Saints and the Admirals freshmen and then turn over to the Browns and the Cowboys. And then watch the Admiral King and Saints freshman game at, at 8 o'clock. There you go. 
Get on the couch, get the cooler ready, bag of chips. You're there. <laughs> Carb Sunday. Juan Williams again, the ball carrier. Gets across the 20-yard line. Looks like he may have picked up enough for the first down. Brought down by a horde of Admiral King tacklers. Or a host, a host of Admiral King tacklers. First and ten for the Southview Saints. We won't have any beehive activity today because it's too cold. The, the bee bees are hibernating. <laughs> <coughs> I never thought I'd bring out my winter jacket on this September well, 17th. Well, I thought for sure you'd have gone to Stephen Berry's and got your winter coat for nine bucks. That's coming. Go Buckeyes. No gain on the play, met right at the line of scrimmage and pushed back. They'll probably spot it right on the line, so that'll bring up a second down and 10 for the Southview Saints. We were indicating that uh, tomorrow, Saturday, September 18th, Barry and I will be here along with our producer, director, cameraman, Joe Bach, to bring you the Admiral King Southview Junior Varsity game. That gets underway at 10 a.m. if you're watching this varsity game in the wee hours of Friday late night, Saturday early morning, and a flag on the play. Coming from the wide guy, that's probably going to be, I don't think it was offsides, but it could be an uh, illegal block. See what he's indicating there. The Saints are moving backwards, oh. so it's going to be against them. It's an illegal motion. Illegal penalty. procedure against the Saints. That'll uh, tack on five more yards. Or they're going to decline the penalty since there was no gain on the play. In fact, a slight loss. Oh, well, you're supposed to do the math. Now it's third and 10. Otherwise, it'd be second and 15. That would go to seven and a half yards per play. It's third and 12. Third and 12, so you're definitely going to take that. Otherwise, it'd be second Absolutely. and 17, so you're still ahead. No, it would be second and 15. Here it is third and 12. Look out. Oh. McCray with the ball. He's up to the 30, across the 30. It'll be close. Somebody didn't cover the, uh, <laughs> the quarterback. I think everybody went for the pitch man, and he just turned the corner. And <laughs> he was wide open. Look at this. He just, <laughs> okay, let me run it. Officials have stopped the clock. They're going to bring the chains across and uh, determine if, in fact, McCray picked up a first down for the Southview Saints. And what is your decision, Mr. Bach? Short. That will make for an interesting uh, call. I, I know you don't want to run. You don't want to give the ball to the Admirals on the 30, but... If you can maintain possession and kill this third quarter and get to the wind. He's got it. He's got the first down. That might be the first time since I've been in the booth that Joe Bach was wrong. You know what it was? The guys were screaming. Right. It's, the it's difficult to see it. But uh, <laughs> Tony Shoulders was right there, right by the ball. And he, he, was was the first, he was the first <laughs> to indicate first down, even before the official had a chance to bring up the arm and point northward. I know in basketball we'd have said, Tony, let me make that call, will you? Let me. <laughs> <laughs> Clock has started. We've got four minutes remaining in the third quarter. Again, the score, Admiral King eight, Southview six. The fake to Juan Williams, the give to Ryan Harvey. Harvey around the right side. Harvey breaking into the open. He's to the 40. He's to the 30, but he's going to be brought down from behind. The little sophomore, Ryan Harvey, 175 pounds. What a beautiful run by the youngster. See, Ron, I think a little later on, as he gets more experience, he's going to realize that once he makes the, the opening, gets to the defensive secondary, Right there's the first cut. Now you should cut it to the outside and just keep running. So you try to cut back and that allows the defense to catch up. Just take off and go. And get as far as you can, as wide as you can. And he, he let the defenders catch him, but it's still first and 10 on the 24-yard line. 
That's got to be the Saints' biggest uh, offensive play. Pitch comes back to Juan Williams, and there is a flag. Flag in the backfield. You know, I really thought I saw one of the Saints move, but they didn't call that. Holding is the call against Southview. Just when you got things going. Now when that umpire throws that flag. They've uh, replaced the flag on the 25 yard line. So that will bring the ball to the 35 where it's going to be first down and 20. So the hold was right at the line of scrimmage. Journal uh, guy just informed me they got 45 yards in penalties on four penalties. So they've all been majors. McCray to pass coming near side. Oh. And it's caught to the five into the end zone. He's got him down on a one. Touchdown. Well, you know what happened, Ron? Ryan Redinger. Ryan Redinger getting that McCray pass and going into the end zone for six points. Southview takes the lead for the first time tonight. Well, you know what happened? The ball was thrown short. It was thrown into the wind, and the Admiral King defender lost sight of it, and Redinger came back and caught it. You'll see it thrown up. It's just hanging up there. And watch him turn around and come back. The, the King defender never saw the ball. And a nice job of stretching with the uh, ball by Redinger to get it uh, on the goal line. Well, what I didn't understand was why the guy that was standing there didn't signal the touchdown. Southview going for the two points and a keep by McCray. He carries the ball into the end zone for two. Well, Ron, the, the strategy of the Saints has worked well because they've taken the most of this quarter where King would have had the win, and they ate it up on the ground, and now they're gonna turn around with the win and the lead. So, pretty good move by the Saints coaching staff there. With two minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter, Southview 14, Admiral King eight. This is always one of the most important things you do is after a touchdown is kids are all excited that they're celebrating and they forget they're on the kickoff team. He's going to, oh, you know, see, I don't understand why. Joe says it's a touchdown, but I thought he stepped out of bounds. But this guy does not signal touchdown. Well, of course, before he, didn't have he the right stepped angle. out of bounds, uh, he had that ball on the goal line. That's pretty much what Garcia did in that Browns game. Well, it looked like he steps out on about the five. See right there? No, he's still, he's still in. Well, that's why I don't have my glasses on. But, and that's why this guy didn't call it. But see, he can't call the touchdown because he doesn't know whether the ball broke the plane. That's why a guy came across and did it. But as I was saying that one of your assistant coaches has to be in charge of the specialty teams and make sure that the right kids and the right number get out there because they're excited because they're they've gone ahead and you got to make sure you got 11. Now the, the Admirals ought to be able to move up a little bit. You know he's going to line drive this ball because he's a soccer kicker. He's into the wind. They ought to move up at least five yards. Chris Garcia puts the foot to the ball. Lands on the 28 oh. and it's covered over on the 25 yard line. So the Admirals will take over first and 10 from their own 25 yard line. Jordan Simmons covering the ball for the Admirals. You wish you'd have given it one more second to see if it was gonna go out of bounds because then he would have had it at the, the 35. 35, so Garcia does the job. He kicks it. See the wind just knocks that ball down. It's hard to tell from here whether it would have gone out of bounds and he was a lot closer to the ball than we were. Well, let's see what happens if the Admirals take advantage of the wind because they don't have their, their uh, running back. Rashawn Lagarde yeah, gets the handoff. Oh, he was one step. Almost, and it was the quarterback, Patrick McCray on defense that got him at the shoestring, brought him down. The only difference between uh, 
Redinger scoring that touchdown, and Garcia is Redinger didn't run over and jump up in the uh, You're right <laughs> the concession stand. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be the Saint Pound? <laughs> yeah, I think. On the 28-yard line, a gain of just two yards. Second down and eight. I was just going to say, Ron, you know. A bit of confusion by the Admirals. They call a timeout with two minutes and three seconds remaining in the third quarter. The score, Southview 14, Admiral King 8. We'll be back right after this. Your one-stop place for something really special is Impressions, corner of Oberlin Avenue and Tower Boulevard. T-shirts and sweatshirts personally designed to your specific needs. Anything from bears, trains to zebras, and specially designed hats as well. And don't forget Impressions, your one-stop spot for school jackets. See Dave, the designer expert at Impressions, Oberlin Avenue at Tower Boulevard, right here in Lorraine. All right, back here at George Daniel Field, oh a little razzle-dazzle, Jerry L. Nixon to the 30, across the 35, picking up a first down for the Admirals. When that play first started, he looked like he hit about 65 yards of real estate, and then the Saints uh, kind of got to it. I was just going to say, Ron, that, you know, Rashawn Lagarde stepped in and, and has taken over admirably for Craig Wood in running the football. He's had to come from the defensive side over to play tailback, so... Pinkerton back to pass across the far side. Jerry L. Nixon over in the area, along with Kevin Wilson, incomplete. Second down and ten. Ron, I'd also like to uh, commend the the center for Admiral King, Eric White. He is uh, that's that Southview again. Southview. I think it's Toth. Russell. Russell Toth. Toth. You know he's done a great job of every snap has been on the on the mark. Pinkerton hasn't had to reach for one or dig one off the ground. Well, if you recall, last year, Russell Toth was the long snapper. Yep. He came in for that fourth down long snap. And this year, he's doing it all and doing a fantastic job, the 225-pound senior. Yeah, that's a tough job. you gotta, you got to snap the ball and then look for your man. you got to wait for Pinkerton to give you the signal. And you snap that ball back without looking. Pass complete and hit immediately. Rashawn Lagarde. Alan Quattlebaum making the stop. That'll bring up a third down. The ball on the 37-yard line. Second West. down and four. Third down and four. As a defender, that's the kind of play you dream of. The running back's got his back to you. He doesn't see you coming. You wait till he catches it and then Whammo. welcome him to Friday night football. It's a big third down for, for both teams. This is a we're in the last minute of the third quarter. Down to 50 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Pinkerton faked the handoff, kept the ball, and thrown for a loss back to the 40-yard line. That'll bring up a fourth and seven. Wait, Patrick McRae has come across on this side of the ball and um, played some pretty good football as a quarterback playing on defense. Rocky Ferraro punting for the Admirals. Good snap from center. Punt taken by Ryan Redinger. Redinger up to the 40-yard line. And the clock is stopped with one second remaining in the third quarter. See, that's another good move by uh, Coach Shoulders and his, his staff. Both of his punt returners are his wide receivers. So who better to catch the football? I know sometimes we try to put our fastest kid back there or our most elusive, and sometimes they don't have great hands. He's got the two best receivers on his team making sure he catches the football on the punt. This will be the last play of the third quarter. And
handoff to Juan Williams. Breaks into the open across the 50. Tackled on the 45. First down for the Southview Saints, bringing the third quarter to an end. We'll be back with the fourth and final quarter right after this timeout. Oh, he... you going to build it? At Wiener Construction, you design it and we build it. It's America's best built hot dog. Start with the DD weenie, the in-betweeny weenie, or the home wrecker on a fresh steam bun. Direct the crew to add anything from chili to cheese to 20 free extra items and add-ons. Then shovel in the french fries, potato pancakes, corn dogs, and more. Finish the job with a refreshing soda or beer. Wiener Construction, it's not a hot dog, it's a meal. First and 10, fourth quarter action, and it's Derek Harvey breaking into the open, picking up a first down, and finally brought down from behind. <laughs> Southview Saints have Man, been just... doing an unbelievable job. We're back in the first quarter. They couldn't gain a yard you know, to save their soul. Sometimes at halftime, a lot of coaching being done there. Absolutely. And you just wonder if there wasn't some adjustments made, and they've found the weakness in the King defense and just... And it doesn't really matter who's carrying the ball. Juan Williams has been carrying it. Uh, now uh, Harvey's carried it. They both got big, big gains. First and 10 for the Saints. Ball on the Admiral King 12 yard line. Well, we're going to see what happens if the Admirals can Tough it up a little bit, Ron, because they give up a score here. That means they're down two scores and into the win for the entire fourth quarter. Ball is on the 10 yard line, a gain of two on the play, second down and eight. And the Saints are in no hurry, Ron. They can just. And they had him. The give is to Jamel Hassan. And he did manage to uh, get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a slight loss on the play. Well, I think he ran 35 yards to get those <laughs> six yards back. No gain, third down and eight. And the Admirals had him. They had him in the backfield several times. And he still was able to turn the corner. I gotta believe that the Saints are in four down territory here. They're not gonna kick a field. Well, they might kick a field goal. Fake to Juan Williams, the pass up the middle and broken up in there by Admiral Kings Rashawn Lagarde. John Harder put a pretty good chase on McCray and gave him a pretty good uh, little bump there at the end. King and almost picked that off. Southview Saints call a timeout. 14-8. They've got the lead. Want to bring to the attention of all organizations out there in Lorraine looking for interesting programs. Lorraine City Schools is offering programs on the school district's history. The programs vary in length from 20 minutes to one hour and can be tailored to fit the organization's preference. There is no charge for any of these programs. Now you have a choice of uh, six different programs by the shores of Old Lake Erie, a history of Lorraine High School. How our schools got their names? The Lorraine Schools Timeline, schools of the 1950s, Lorraine in 1953, and that includes a video along with the talk. And lastly, George Daniel Field, Lorraine's Common Ground. Again, a video along with the talk. To schedule one or more of these free programs, contact Jim Smith, Lorraine City School historian, and you can call him at 233-2240. That's 233-2240, Jim Smith. Right. And a field goal attempt. Well, I think what, what made the decision is Patrick McCray sitting on the bench and in a world of hurt. 
Chris Garcia will be kicking from the 17, 27 yarder, and it is good. Three more points tacked on by the Southview Saints. They now jump ahead by a score of 17 to eight with 10.05 well, remaining makes, in the ball game. That makes it two scores now, Ron. Absolutely. He has to score twice. That was a, I'd like to be able to find out from uh, Tony Shoulders whether Patrick McCray being hurt had any decision on that because then he didn't have a quarterback for his fourth down. And he went ahead with Garcia kicking the ball, freshman. Big time game, came through. Got to give him a lot of credit. Chris Garcia has come a long way since we first saw him. Oh, yeah, he... <laughs> because there were a couple of attempted field goals in that first game that we did well, with the Southview Saints. and three uh, balls out of bounds. Uh, absolutely. But Patrick, to more concern, Ron, is Patrick McCray's on the sidelines being looked at by the trainers and the medical staff, and that's a two-way player you're losing right there. You're losing your quarterback, and you're losing the kid who's played the best defense in the second half for you. And surprisingly, he got hurt on defense. And we have uh, backup quarterback Todd Ferguson uh, warming up right now on the sidelines for Southview. That so the injury that's... may be a little more than what meets the eye. Yeah, he was limping, so that puts, uh, that just shows the intensity of this game, Ron. You've got three or four of the best players been taken out with injury, and you know. It's going to have to be serious if you want to come out of this game. Chris Garcia kicking off for the Southview Saints. And that one will go out of bounds. So the Admirals will take over first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. See, that's where that kind of kick run, you just tell them to kick it down the middle of the field. Well, I think what they're trying to do is to kick it to one side or the other to narrow the running field. And yet he's, he's taking too much of an angle. Just kick it. A reminder that next week, Friday, here at George Daniel Field, the Admiral King Admirals will be going against Maple Heights. Southview will be on the road next week, traveling to Lakewood. And the Southview Saints have called a timeout with the score 17, Southview 8, Admiral King. Well, they only got nine guys out there now. You know what happened, Ron? I think they got confused. I think they thought they were going to kick it over. Well, the Lorraine School Employees Credit Union will be celebrating their 50th anniversary in February of 2005. Membership is limited to employees of the Lorraine Board of Education and their immediate family members living at home. The credit union offers savings accounts, checking, certificates of deposits, mortgages, and ATM. We have competitive loan rates on new and used autos, so call or stop by the credit union to discuss your financial needs. The staff at the credit union wishes the Admirals and the Saints good luck in their inner city rivalry this evening. And don't forget to come and see the soccer games on Monday, September 20th, starting at 4 p.m. Office hours at the credit union, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Well, you don't have to get too excited about that run because it's coming back. Rashawn Lagarde uh, did manage to pick up enough for a first down, but as you indicated, there is a flag on the 35-yard line. No doubt it will be holding against the Admirals, which seems to have been the plague as of late when the flags are thrown. No. A block, illegal block yes. below the knees. Yes. Below the waist. That too. <laughs> Depending on how tall he is. <laughs> Could be the waist on some, the knees on others. Anyway, Ron, that, that call was put in years back to prevent kids from getting hurt because used to be able, we used to be able to block below the waist and you could really do some damage on a kid, tear his knees up. And that's a 15-yarder. Brings the ball back to the 20-yard line. Ouch. I think, I think we've only had one or two little penalties. I think we had an encroachment, we had an illegal motion, and everything else has been Holding and felonies. now this one, <laughs> felonies, right. <laughs> we've had, First and 25 for the Admirals. We've had two misdemeanors and a lot of felonies tonight. Pinkerton looking to pass, far side, 
Jerry Al Nixon grabs it on the 30 and manages to pull his way up to the 35-yard line. They'll spot the ball just over the 35, back to the original line of scrimmage. So uh, the pass play picks up 15 yards. It'll be second down and 10. Now one of the things that the Saints want to try to do is make sure they tackle the ball carrier or the receiver in bounds. The, the clock is their best friend right now. They almost have to score twice. Pinkerton looking, looking. He's going to hang on to the ball and he'll be thrown for a loss. A nice That'll tap. bring up a third down and about 11 or 12. You know, Ron, one of the things I, I know if I were coaching, one of the things I would do is I'd put one of those linebackers on Pinkerton. You don't have anything else to do but watch him. You go where he goes. And that, maybe that's the case when Rick Ramirez is done with his defense and just shadow him. If you let him, don't let him cross the line of scrimmage. On the 34 yard line, third and 11. The Saints. Uh, must think it's going to be a pass, so they put some quicker kids in the down positions, have the bigger guys play on rundowns. See, the pros do that a lot. And the clock just keeps ticking. Down to eight minutes and 20 seconds in the ball game. Pinkerton fakes oh, the pass, down. hands it off to Rashawn Lagarde. He can't handle it. Southview has recovered the loose football. My, oh my. There's Josh White, I believe. Nope, 23? I can't, 33. 33, Josh White. He's played a heck of a football game. Yes, he has. There's the fake pass, the handoff, and uh, Rashawn Lagarde just didn't get a handle on it. To the ground it went, Josh White recovering. And it's going to be first and 10 for the Southview Saints on the Admiral King 28-yard line. Is McCray back at quarterback? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Patrick McCray back at the position. You know, I'm sure Coach Shoulders went to him and said, can you go in there and just hand the ball off? I'm not going to make you run. I'm not going to make you throw it. Just hand the ball off. And he did to Derek Harvey. Harvey got the ball up close to the 20-yard line. The Admirals have to be really deflated now, Ron. They Everything's working against them, and they need the ball, and they needed a big play, and they turned it over. The Saints could just take this one. Gain of seven yards, second down and three. Again, the handoff, this time to Juan Williams. Williams looks like he picked up the first down, and indeed he did. You know, if, if you're Tony Shoulders, you're just telling your running backs, put two hands on the football, no extra, just get through the hole. I mean, you can take 35 to 40 seconds for every running play. Ball is on the 16-yard line, first and 10. The give again to Juan Williams. He is met right at the line by Patrick Carter, P.J. Carter. He just stepped up in the hole and, and read, read the down block and just stepped right there. Guard missed his block for Southview, and P.J. welcomed him. No gain on the play, second down and 10. I'd be very surprised if Southview puts this ball up at all the rest of the way out. Pitch goes back to Juan Williams. He couldn't handle it, but he fell on it. Loss on the play. Southview maintains possession. The ball back on the 20 yard line. That'll make it second down and 13. I'm surprised they even did that. I'm yes. surprised they, you don't want to do anything that's going to cause you the possibility of giving the ball back. Just hand it off, line up in the huddle, talk about where we're going after the game, get on the line of scrimmage. And I wonder, too, if the individual who is getting the ball is paying more attention to would-be tacklers. He's than looking to see where the hole is sometimes. Yep. Get the ball and then look. And stay in bounds. Third down, 13. 
McCray going to pass, looking. He's going to hang on to the ball. Let's it go this time to Ryan Harvey. Ryan Harvey walks into the end zone for six. And there is no yellow flag on the field. So That's the Southview Saints tack on six more. That's a great play right there. He ran as far, far as he could, as long as he could. He knew where the line of scrimmage was. He just waited, 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 dumped the ball right there. And look at that. Ryan Harvey, the sophomore, right into the end zone. Now that should have been a penalty. And I believe you're going to see it marked off. I think I saw the referee. You're going to have unsportsmanlike touchdown. Unsportsmanlike, if, if we run it again, we'll see him spike the ball in the end zone, and that's no-no in high school football. And uh, that's a 15-yard penalty. Which, you know, it, it, in this particular case, Ron, it, it, it's not going to be a determining factor. Absolutely. But some game it could be. You could score the, the, the game to put it within one point, and now you've got to kick a... 30-yard field goal. And the Southview Saints call timeout on the field. Want to take this opportunity to remind you again about the Lorraine Schools Employees Credit Union uh, celebrating their 50th anniversary in the coming month of February 2005. We told you about all the good things that they can do for you. Let us remind you where they're located. 4459 Oberlin Avenue, the very first suite, suite 101. Or you can give them a call for further information, and that number is 282-4600. 282-4600. That's the Lorraine School Employees Credit Union. You know, Ron, one of the, the great quotes from Joe Paterno taught his running backs, when you score a touchdown, hand the ball to the official, don't let him think it's your first time in the end zone. Hand the ball to him and then come over and dance and celebrate. And we had it while you were doing the commercial. We had to, and, and showed him spiking the ball. And, and I'm sure, you know, it's hard to stop You see him done that. by the professionals and you're excited and you want to be like the big guys. On the try for the two extra points, it's Derek Harvey, but he's going to wind up short. The pass from McCray to Derek Harvey on the far side. Just uh, short by a couple of yards of the end zone. So the score will remain Southview 23, Admiral King 8, with five minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the ball game. You know, I'm sure, Ron, one of the big blows to the Admirals was losing Craig Wood. I mean, he was going up and down the sidelines and uh, up and down the field, carrying the ball, giving the first down after first down. Then you lose him, it kind of takes the wind out of your sails, but you got to be able to come back and, and still play. You still got 11 guys out there, you still got 35 guys on the sidelines. You got to come up and play. You can't use that as an excuse, and I'm sure that uh, Coach Campone's staff won't say that. You, right, you know, exactly. And as we've indicated twice already, not only did the Admirals lose Craig Wood in tonight's game, but they've lost Terrence Mims, who was a big factor in the backfield for the Admirals. As well as Mark Jones. Mark Jones uh, came in and played a lot of... I think he, I remember him in the first couple games returning kickoffs and, and doing a good job with that. And also he came in to play tailback. This is a, you know, of all the... Your senior year, this is the one game you don't want to miss due to an injury. Because again, like we said last night, this is for bragging rights. These guys went to school together, junior high, elementary. They play baseball together. They're in the parks playing basketball. Chris Garcia kicking off. Down the middle, Ron. What do you think? Do you think he heard me? Picked up by Rashawn Lagarde. And finally tackled just over the 20 yard line. So the Admirals will take over on about their own 21-yard line, first and 10. I'm sure that uh, Coach Shoulders and his staff, they'll give Admiral King 10 yards every play. You know, I've been meaning to mention just outside George Daniel Stadium last year and throughout this season, have you noticed the nice banners on the utility poles? Yes. Uh, whoever's responsible for having done that, a touch of class. And they got I nice signs up on the top, too. 
that say the Admiral King Admirals and the Saints? Well, that's the painting job. That, that was done uh, a few years back. But I'm talking about the banners on the utility poles right by the stadium, uh, honoring the high school, Southview, uh, Admiral King, Lorraine St. Mary, Lorraine Catholic, even though uh, those two schools no longer exist, Lorraine Senior, no longer existing as a high school, and indicating the various sports involved. Uh, a nice touch of class, whether it was the school system who did that or the city. Or collaboration or a collaboration yeah, absolutely there again Ron you know that the Saints are willing to give up that 10 yards but you got to keep him in bounds first and 10 for the Admirals Pinkerton looking to pass and oh, nice broken play. up at the last moment Jerry Al Nixon the intended receiver over there as McCray again the quarterback again we noticed he wasn't starting defense and he's played at least the second half if not three quarters and uh, he's done a very good job ball is on the 37 yard line second down and 10 clock stopped on the incomplete pass with five minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the ball game he's playing linebacker That's an interesting uh, combination Again, back to pass Pinkerton, and it's intercepted by the Southview Saints, Eric Montroso. No, I correction, Ryan Redinger, and he takes it into the end zone, touchdown. But there's a flag back on about the 12, 13 yard line. Ron, the only thing that was going to be questionable in that play was who was going to pick it off, either Redinger or Lorente. They were both there, both waiting for the ball. I think Redinger stepped right in front of it. And he's not too happy having just been robbed of a touchdown by whatever the penalty is going to be. Holding is the call against Southview. They'll keep possession of the ball, but they'll have to earn six more points. At, at this point in time, Ron, I don't think they care about that. I mean, they'd like to have the touchdown, but now you got the ball. It's in your hands. You can kill two or three minutes without doing anything. And there's a factor where the win played. It Again, held that ball up. The Again, ball kind of hung in there long enough for Ryan Redinger to pick it off. Yeah, versus thrown with it and thrown into it. And that was an astute observation on your part. Mm. One of few. <laughs> well, when they happen, I have to. <laughs> Thank you. I have Thank to bring you. them to the attention of our viewers. Derek Harvey breaks away from a would-be tackler. Almost uh, getting him in the backfield was John Harder. PJ Finally Carter making the tackle. Carter and Harder. Had, uh... Well, at this point, I'm sure uh, if Coach Shoulders is sending the plays in, he's holding that guy in the sidelines and just making sure he doesn't get out there too soon. Gain of a yard, second down and nine. I mean, at this point, you don't even care if you take a delay a game penalty. Another flag. Juan Williams, the ball carrier. That's gonna be a hold. Just like last week. And that stops the clock which is something Southview does not really want to have happen. Clock stopped with four minutes and 23 seconds. Well, remember yesterday, Ron, in the freshman game, we just had uh, numerous holding penalties. You just want me to say plethora, don't no, you? No, 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 no plethora is today. I've, I've used astute. I've used a couple other words, no plethora today. I, I didn't even use it yesterday. You did, though. Yes, I did. I thought you would enjoy hearing it, one like, of the like I've had to hear it. One of the advantages our cameraman has over us is he can eat while he works. He's over there chewing on a banana. And must be getting cramps. <laughs> on the 30-yard line, second down and 16 for the Saints. Another flag. Jamil Hassan carrying the ball for the Saints. You know, one of the sad things about that, Ron, is the kids are playing their heart out knowing it's going to, you know, it's, it's all for naught. At least in basketball, when you blow the whistle, they know it's, <laughs> the foul's immediate, but here. Illegal motion against the Saints. 
That'll tack on five more yards, bringing up a second down and uh, 21. Boy, the Saints keep this up. They might be at about zero uh, net yards. Ball is on the 35, second and 21. That yeah, referee is making sure that clock gets going. The Harveys and Hassan in the backfield. McRae passing to Hassan. Jamil Hassan to the 20. He jukes once. He's finally brought down at about the four yard line. Looking for a flag, <laughs> don't see one. Yes, there is. There is a flag over on the 35 yard line. Oh, oh my. Man. We may be going for a record here, Ron. That's three plays in a row, right? There's the, just like in the first half, Ron, that play was clear on the other side of the field. Illegal procedure again, the call, that's two in a row against the Saints. You know what I gotta believe that is, Ron? I don't think they have enough guys on the line of scrimmage. They have to have at least seven, and I, don't, I think that's what he's calling. He's counting the, the bodies, and then when the play snapped, he realizes there aren't seven people on the line of scrimmage. So one of these wide receivers, he has to step up. Second down and 31. McCray hands off to this time in the ball game, Alan Quattlebaum. Quattlebaum gets the ball up to the 36 yard line. That'll bring up a second down and long yardage. No penalty, so the clock does continue to run. We're down to 240. Ray back to pass into the flats and in and out of the hands of Derek Harvey. And, and right the there the covering for uh, the Admirals, John Harder, had he been able to grab it. Don't know how fast he runs, but uh, he would have had a clear shot to the end zone. Well, you know, Ron, some of our, uh, some of our other teams in uh, Lorraine are doing quite well. Uh, Southview girls volleyball, uh, Admiral King girls tennis, playing pretty pretty good uh, record so far this year. So sports are abounding here in uh, Lorraine City. Low snap. Josh White gets the punt away. It'll go into the end zone. The Admirals will have it on their own 20, first and 10, with 214 remaining in the ball game. One of the things that uh, I oftentimes enjoyed doing during the game when there was a bit of a lull, if you recall, is having the football program in front of me and highlighting the participants in some of these minor sports that TV 20 doesn't cover, like cross country, golf, and tennis. But uh, between these two high schools, trying to secure a football program has been about as rare as finding hen's teeth. <laughs> so we hope that uh, maybe the interim athletic director, Rich Yunker, will be able to come up with some programs so we can give recognition to these youngsters participating in sports and in the band as well, like the seniors, and there's a flag. That's gonna be a face mask. I believe that's a face mask. And that should go against the Admirals. There it is. Face mask against the Admirals. Against Southview, the I'm sorry. You. Against Southview, defense. Get a five yard penalty.
Rashawn Lagarde, the ball carrier, and there's a flag back on the 19-yard uh, line. While you pay attention and sort it out, I just want to uh, remind the folks out there that there are brand new bikes in each elementary school here in Lorraine, either in the kitchen or in the cafeteria. And it's all part of Aramark's focus on physical activity and nutrition. They have donated a bike to each school with the help of Kellogg's. The promotion will take place on Tuesday, September 21st, Wednesday, September 22nd, and Thursday, September 23rd. On those uh, days, any child eating breakfast, which is absolutely free, by the way, should look for a lucky sticker on his or her breakfast bag or tray. There will be 10 stickers per school each day, and if a child receives a lucky sticker, he or she needs to notify the food service manager who will enter the name into a raffle. And each school will decide when to call the winning name, preferably over the morning announcements, on Friday, September 24th. Pass in the flats to uh, Admiral King's Jordan Simmons. And the Saints are just very content to uh, let the clock run out. Let's let the Admiral King catch those little passes and So uh, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts and uncles remind the youngsters that when they have breakfast at school, and again, all breakfasts are free, look for the sticker. They could possibly win a bicycle. Gain of six yards, uh, or couple of yards on the play. Anyway, it's third down and four for the Admirals. Ball is on their 26-yard line. Pinkerton looking to pass, comes downfield, and almost intercepted. Intended receiver Jerry Al Nixon covering on the play for Southview. Allen Quattlebaum let it slip right through his yeah, fingers. Yeah, I think he should have had that. He's wishing he had that back, but uh, let's keep an eye on. Oh, they got Mr. Shoulders is uh, soaked. They got him good. <laughs> oh, yes. And with this brisk breeze. He's going to hurry up and get out of that. <laughs> but I tell you what, knowing Tony, he'll take that water dumped on him anytime. Down to 15 seconds remaining in the ball game. Clock was stopped on the incomplete pass. It's fourth down. Admiral's going for it. LaShawn Lagarde, he didn't have a chance to take a step. No. He was met and hit. He's lucky he didn't... Uh, Fumble and that's back. the last play. No, it's not because the ball will turn over. Southview will have the opportunity to take a knee and run off the clock. First and 10 for the Southview Saints on the Admiral King 21-yard line. Well, Ron, the uh, rubber match will be played tomorrow. Yes, the freshman defeated Southview, Admiral King's freshman, 22 to 8. Here in the varsity game, the final score, Southview 23, Admiral King 8. One There's point. almost identical scores. And tomorrow, the junior varsity teams will go at it, and we'll have that covered. We'll be back to wrap it up and pick our players of the game for Admiral King and for Southview. But first, this timeout. Freedom to think for yourself. To disagree with the government. Freedom to be equal. To be different. Freedom to raise a family. To marry the man I love. The freedom to worship the God of my choice. To live with dignity. The freedom to be me. To be whatever I want to be. Defending freedom for over 200 years. Well, as we indicated, uh, when the game is all said and done, someone is going to walk out of George Daniel Stadium a winner. Both these teams 0-3 prior to tonight. 
Tonight, Southview is 1-3, and three, the Admirals 0-4. Oh Your evaluation of the game. Ron, it was a close football game in the first half, and in fact, the Admirals kind of dominated everything but the scoreboard. They went in at, at halftime up 8-6, and it was all Southview in the second half. They, they, they came out, gave the ball, the Admirals took the win, and just held things down and took over in the fourth quarter and just dominated the football game. Saints obviously picking up 17 points in the second half, so whatever Tony Shoulders and his assistants managed to accomplish in that locker room at halftime, it came out and worked for the Saints in the second half. Well, the Saints will be traveling to Lakewood next week Friday to take on the Rangers in a Lake Erie League contest, while the Admirals will be back here at George Daniel Stadium to take on Maple Heights, and that is going to be another tough encounter for Coach Mark Campo and his Admirals. And as you pointed out uh, quite well, Barry, the fact that this game is the fourth game of the season, where do you go after losing such an intense game? I mean, how difficult is it for the coaching staff to be able to get these guys back up for next Friday's game you against know, Maple Heights? It, it's tough when you got to come back from being 0-4, but when you're 0-4 and you lost to your crosstown rivals, I don't know how Mark does it. I, I, again, when I coached the King and we played Lorraine High game 8, we could have played Lincoln Elementary School and had a tough time the next week because we always had to go to Sandusky, and then we had to play Finley and finish it up, and it was all we always wanted that game to be last, and, and it's going to be real hard for, for Mark and his staff to to regroup them and, and try to bring them back and get them online. Well, we've got our players of the game for the Lorraine Southview Saints. The player of the game is the quarterback, number four, Patrick McCray, who also in the second half did a yeoman's job as a linebacker on defense. And for the Admiral King Admirals, the player of the game is our center, Russell Toth. And your thoughts on <laughs> these two young men? Everybody's sitting there saying, the center? Well, again, Ron, they played out of the shotgun. Admiral King went to a different offensive look. Pinkerton was changing plays. And every snap, this entire football exactly. game was on the money. The, the two times they had to punt, he did a great job. I, I, I've never seen a kid snap the ball that well for that many times in this big of a game. Both Patrick McRae and Russell Toth will receive two free passes to the Palace Civic Center to see a movie of uh, their choice. And once there, they will receive two boxes of popcorn and two soft drinks. They will be permitted to bring a guest uh, of their choice. And I'm wondering if Russell Toth might be bringing Coach Nesbitt, his center coach. I don't him. know that Russell Toth's going to have a decision in that. I think Mr. Nes Coach Nesbitt's going to make that decision for him. All right, we wish them both well, and uh, again, a great job on the part of Patrick McRae and Russell Toth, and uh, for all the players that were out there, someone's got to win, someone's got to lose, and I know it's a heartbreaking situation for the Admirals, and the Saints just got to feel like they're on seventh heaven, and uh, we wish them well as well for the rest of the season. We'll be back here tomorrow morning at George Daniel Field. The game time, 10 a.m. It's the Junior Varsity Contest between the Admirals and the Southview Saints. So until then, the final score again, 23 for Southview, 8 for Admiral King. For my partner, Barry Buck, our cameraman, producer, and director, Joe Bach, I'm Ron Bacalar. Good night, everyone. This has been a production of Lorraine City Schools, TV 20, WLCS. To purchase a high-quality copy of the program you just viewed, please call Lorraine City Schools Television at 282-8400.